the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Retta Vinson was a singer at Duke Duval's Variety Palace in Dawson City. With her blonde hair and wide open blue eyes, she looked as demure and innocent as a china doll. But more than one man had found out when his gold was spent that her heart was as cold as the Arctic snows. Greta was applying her makeup one afternoon when Duke Duval, the owner of the Variety Palace, knocked at the door of her dressing room. Come in. Oh, you, Duke. You've got a visitor around the cafe. Who is it? That fellow you've been stringing along lately. Jack Conway? That's right. Tell him I'll be right out. Okay. And uh, while we're on the subject, you better hook that kid while the hooking is good. How come? I've been checking up on that claim of his. It's worth plenty. Mm -hmm. How much is plenty? That's hard to tell. Maybe a hundred grand, maybe more. Damn. Hey, I've been underestimating that young man. Has he asked you to marry him yet? I'm expecting a proposal any day now. <laughs> well, when it comes, you know what to say. I ought to by this time. <laughs> I'll go out and tell him you're nearly ready. Jack Conway was only 20, but despite his youth, he was an experienced sourdough. For two years before the Klondike stampede, Jack and his older brother Steve had prospected for gold in Alaska and the northern fringes of the Yukon Territory. Then, when the big strike came on Bonanza, the brothers had joined the rush to the Klondike and staked out claims side by side on Bear Creek. As Greta Vinson approached Jack's table, the young sourdough greeted her with an eager smile. Greta! Hello, Jack. Here, let me get your chair. Thanks. Oh, gee, Greta. You're even more beautiful than I remembered. <laughs> you sound as though you hadn't seen me for months. Well, it seems like years. Why, it's just been three days. Oh, well, every day away from you is a year as far as I'm concerned. Sweet of you to say that, Jack. And I feel the same way. I've missed you terribly. I brought you a present. Here, you'll have to unwrap it. Jack. It's a ring. It's not much, but it's the best I could find in Dawson. I only hope it fits. Jack, I couldn't wear this. It would mean that I... What's the matter? Jack, how do you suppose I ever happened to come to the Yukon in the first place? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I never thought about it. But I'm sure glad you came. I was out of a job in Frisco. Down to my last cent. On top of that, I had about $5,000 in debts to pay off debts that my mother and dad had owed before they died. Gee, honey, that must have been awful. I wish I'd been there to help you. Oh, I wish you had too, Jack. But you weren't. That's when Duke Duval came along. You mean the man who owns this place? Yes, that's right. He was getting together a troop of entertainers to come up north, put on their acts here at this variety palace. He liked my looks and my singing, so he offered me a job. Go on. He offered me a good salary. And he also agreed to lend me the $5,000 I needed to pay off my debt. In return, I had to sign a two-year contract. When do you have to pay back the $5,000? But he's taking $200 out of my pay every month. By the time my contract is up, the money will be just about paid back. Well, how much longer does your contract have to run? A little over a year and a half. I still owe him $4,000. What would happen if you broke your contract? Duke would demand his 4000 Cash on the line. Oh, he's a nice guy to work for, but he's hard as nails as far as money is concerned. 4000 is a lot of money to raise on short notice. Especially right now with the creeks all freezing over. Steve and I wouldn't be able to get that much gold out of our claims until the spring cleanup next year. Darling, 
surely you don't think I'd let you pay off that money to do? Of course I do. If you're going to be my wife, it's my job to take over your debts. Where's Duke now? In his office, I suppose. Let's go talk to him. All right. Duke Duvall listened sympathetically to Jack's remarks, a friendly smile masking his usual cold-eyed, sinister expression. When the young sourdough was through, Duke removed the cigar from his mouth and replied, Well, young fella, I can appreciate how you feel. I kind of thought you were getting pretty sweet on Greta, but that doesn't alter the fact that she owes me $4,000. You'll get your money, even though Greta does break her contract. It's just that I can't pay you right away. Not until the spring cleanup on the creeks. A promise to pay that's not backed by security isn't worth a plug nickel. Oh, I'll give you security. What kind of security? Well, there's my claim. Wouldn't that do? Uh, well, yes, I reckon it would. Of course, you realize this note of Gritter's is payable on demand. You'd have to agree to the same terms. Why on demand? I can't pay it till spring. I understand that. And spring is plenty soon enough, as far as I'm concerned. Just that I want to be prepared for emergencies, that's all. Now, if I should get squeezed for money at any time, then I want to be able to call in that 4000 All right, I guess that's fair enough. Greta, would you be willing to marry me tomorrow if Duval and I get this contract business settled? Oh, of course I would, darling. The sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. Ah, that's wonderful. Then I'll go back to my cabin and get the title to my claim. I'll bring it to town tomorrow morning. Duval and I can settle our business. And then you and I'll go hunt up a preacher. It was late afternoon when Jack Conway arrived back at the cabin on Bear Creek, which he shared with his brother Steve. The older man listened while Jack told him of the arrangements he had made with Greta and Duke Duvall. Then Steve exploded with indignation. You chuckle-headed young fool. What's the matter? What's the matter? Don't you realize that Duvall and that Vincent girl are playing you for a sucker? I don't know what you're talking about. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Greta Vincent isn't in love with you. She hasn't got any intention of marrying you. The only reason she's promising to marry you is to get you to sign over your claim. But I'm not signing over my claim. I'm just using it as security on my note. And the note is payable on demand. The minute you sign that note, Duvall will ask for his money. You won't be able to pay, so he'll take over title to your claim. My Greta wouldn't be party to any such jip deal as that. Don't be so gullible. Dance hall girls have been pulling that game ever since the first time a sourdough struck it rich. Greta Vincent is no different from any of the rest of them. She's just a little swindler. Why, you... Jack's blows staggered his brother momentarily, but Steve refused to defend himself or hit back. You'd better take back what you said about Greta and do it mighty fast. Calm down a minute now. You heard what I said. Now listen, kid. I've been taking care of you ever since you were knee-high to a grasshopper. We've spent two years prospecting this rotten wilderness. We've starved and frozen and slaved our hearts out together. Now we've each got a decent stake. And if you think I'm going to let any cheap dance hall girl swindle you out of it... <laughs> You asked for it, Steve. Now get your hands up and fight back. All right, kid. If you want to play it the hard way, I'll go along with you. All the pent-up emotion born of two long years of hardship and privation boiled to the surface as the two brothers waded into each other. They pounded each other back and forth across the cabin. Finally, Steve landed a hard right and left that knocked Jack unconscious. Sorry I had to do that, kid. But it's the only way I could knock some sense into your head. Here. Steve carried his brother over to his bunk. Then he put on his parka and prepared to go into town. You just stay right there and sleep it off, kid. In the meantime, I'll take care of Mr. Duke Duval and his dance hall queen. Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, were returning to Dawson City from patrol up the Klondike River. As they passed the Conway cabin at the mouth of Bear Creek... The sergeant decided to stop off and visit the two brothers. Okay. Hey, hey. Oh, no. Come on, boy. Wonder how Jack and Steve were making out, fella. We haven't seen them since they staked their claims. Oh, maybe they aren't home. King's sensitive nostrils told him that someone was inside the cabin. So he tried to push the door open with his nose. Sergeant Preston opened the door and King trotted boldly inside. Uh, nothing like making ourselves right at home, King. As Sergeant Preston entered the cabin, he saw Jack lying unconscious on the bunk. 
He noticed the young miner's bruised and disheveled appearance. Looks like Jack came out on the short end of an argument. Now, we'll see if we can't bring him around. King watched as his master bathed the unconscious man's face with melted snow. In a few moments, Jack began to regain uh, consciousness. Uh, Sergeant Preston, what the dickens are you doing here? I stopped by to pay you and Steve a visit, Jack. You were lying on the bunk, looking slightly the worse for wear, so I thought a little first aid was indicated. Oh, I guess you were right about that. What happened? Oh, Steve and I had a slight falling out. What's the matter? Cabin fever? No, no. We get along fine as far as that goes. Just that Steve doesn't approve my choice of a wife. Well, I didn't know you were going to be married. Congratulations. Who is she? Her name's Greta Vinson. She's a singer at Duke Duval's Variety Palace in Dawson. What's Steve got against her? He thinks she and her boss are trying to swindle me out of my claim. Well, it's happened before, but I hope it's not true in this case. Tell me about it. It's like this, Sergeant. Just before Greta came up here to the Yukon, Duke Duval lent her $5,000. Sergeant Preston listened to Jack's story, and then he said... Where do you suppose Steve went after you had your fight? Search me, Sergeant. Why? I'm just wondering if he could have gone into town looking for trouble with Duval. Holy mackerel, I never thought of that. Steve's pretty hot-tempered. He's a holy terror. If he tangles with Duval, there's likely to be bloodshed. Come on, King, I think we'd better make tracks for Dawson. Hold it a minute, Sergeant, I'm coming with you. All right, Jack, but understand this. If there is trouble, I'll handle it. Night had fallen, and Dawson City was ablaze with its usual boomtown gaiety when Steve Conway arrived at Duke Duval's Variety Palace. He went directly to Duke's office. Duke Duval was seated at his desk, with Greta Vinson standing beside him. Oh, you're both here together, huh? Well, that's fine. Who in thunder are you? Why, it's Jack Conway's brother. That's right, sweetheart. I'm Jack's brother, Steve. I didn't think you'd remember my face after just meeting me once. What do you want, Conway? I came to tell you that your swindle's not going to pan out. My kid brother's not going to sign that note covering your girlfriend's phony debt. Are you insinuating that I lied to Jack? I'm not insinuating it. I'm saying it right to your face. How dare you say such a thing? Jack and I love each other. What makes you think your brother's not going to sign that note, Conway? I don't think it. I know it. Here's something else, Duval. If you and Greta try any more funny stuff on Jack, I'm going to beat your face in. Why, you big clodhopper? Who do you think you're scaring with that kind of talk? Maybe you'd like a sample of what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think maybe I would. All right, then try this. Duval failed to block Steve's sudden punch, and he reeled back under the force of the blow. But he recovered instantly and came back swinging. Greta stepped out of the way and watched calmly as the two men slugged it out. Both men were accustomed to the rough and tumble brawling of the gold camp, and neither hesitated to wield chairs or bottles or anything else that came to hand. Finally, Duke Duval weakened and went down beneath Steve's relentless pounding. Uh, you had enough, Duval? Uh, you dirty poor cat. I'll show you who's had enough. As he spoke, Duval whipped out a knife. But before he could struggle to his feet, Steve was on top of him. The two men grappled desperately. Then Greta saw her chance. She brought a heavy paperweight smashing down on Steve's head. Sourdough relaxed his grip on Duke. And at the same moment, the knife sank home in his side. Duke Duval got slowly to his feet. For a moment, he stared stupidly at Steve's inert body. Then Greta exclaimed, You fool, Duke. You killed him. It was his own fault. He started it, didn't he? Didn't mean you had to pull a knife on him. No, shut up and let me think. What are you going to do? Go get Monk Party. Yeah, all right. A few moments later, Greta Vinson returned to the office, followed by Monk Prady. Monk was Duke Duvall's right-hand man. What's up, boss? I was just getting ready. Holy smoke. Who is he? His name's Steve Conway. He's Jack Conway's brother. What happened to Never him? Never mind the foolish question. Could you hear anything out there in the cafe? Oh, oh, nothing in particular. I was standing right by the bar. Yeah. I uh, kind of thought I heard some sort of a set two going on in here, but there was so much noise out there, I couldn't be sure. Good. Then go get your parky. What's the deal? We'll take Conway's body out the back way and carry it straight down the alley to the river. No one will see us. Yeah? Then what? I've got a boat tied up at the bank. We'll weight the body down with a few good-sized rocks and... Then we'll row down river a ways and dump it overboard. I figure that's safe. Sure, it's safe. The river will be frozen over in another few days. By the time it thaws next spring, the current will have carried the body clear down to the Circle City. 
After that, it won't matter whether the body washes up or not. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, just one thing more, Duke. What's in? How much is there in it for me? Uh, $500. Good enough. You can pay me right now. <laughs> you're a trusting soul, aren't you? Duke Duvall weighed out a small quality of gold dust on the scales that stood on his desk. Then he poured the dust into a small poke and handed it to Monk Crowley. Well, there's your money. Now go get your park and be quick about it. Sure, boss. Duke, there's someone at the door. I'm not deaf. Duke opened the door just wide enough to look out. Sergeant Preston was waiting just outside. Beside him stood Jack Conway and the great dog King. Duke Duvall slipped through the door and closed it behind him. Well, hello there, young fella. I didn't know you were out here. Howdy, Duvall. What can I do for you, Monty? I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. I came to ask if Jack's brother Steve's been around here tonight. Nope, not so far as I know. What happened to your face? Huh? What do you mean? Looks a little battered. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, that. Why, well, we had some trouble a little earlier this evening, uh... A couple of Chicago's started cutting up rough. I had to toss them out in their ears. I see. Well, in any case, you haven't seen Steve Conway. Oh, that's right, Sergeant. Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't even know the fella. All right, thanks. And I won't bother you any further. As Sergeant Preston turned to leave, King whined protestingly. The intelligent dog had caught the scent of Steve Conway clinging to Duvall's clothing. He recognized it as a scent which he had smelled back at the Conway cabin. And instinctively, he sensed that it belonged to the man his master was looking for. What's the matter with your dog, Sergeant? I don't know. Seems to have picked up a scent of some kind. Yeah. Well, uh, hang on to him. He can't go in there. Oh, why not? My office is private. That goes for dogs as well as people. Suppose I tell you I'd like to search your office in my capacity as a police officer. I'd still tell you to keep on. I can always go get a search warrant, you know. Then go get one. Until you do, I understand no more rights. I don't like to be pushed around by a red coach or anyone else. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Come on, King. You coming too, Jack? Why, uh... Yeah, yeah, I'll go with you, sir. Duke Duvall returned to his office. What happened, Duke? A uh, buddy named Sergeant Prester came snooping around looking for Steve Conway. Steve's kid brother was with him. You mean Jack? Who do you suppose I mean? What did you tell him, Ali? Well, I stole him off. But his dog picked up Conway's scent. So now he's gone for a search warrant. Where do you think you're going, Greta? Out in the cafe. Any reason why I shouldn't? I know. No, I guess not. Go ahead. As Greta left the office and closed the door behind her, Duke Duvall and Monk Prouty exchanged worried looks. Finally, Monk said... You thinking the same thing I'm thinking? She seemed kind of anxious to get out of here, didn't she? Too blamed anxious. I wouldn't trust that dame any farther than I can see her. Go out and see where she goes. But for Pete's sake, hurry. We've got to get this guy out of here before that Monty gets back with a search warrant. Sure thing, boss. Greta Vinson was thinking fast. She knew that Duke Duvall was in a tight spot. And if convicted of murder, she too would share the punishment. She was no more in love with Jack Conway than she had been with any of the other men who had fallen for her. But on the other hand, a rich gold claim was better than a hemp rope. Her lynx parka was hanging on a hook by the door. Greta snatched it up furtively and slipped out the door. She had intended to go straight to mounted police headquarters. But as she came out of the cafe, she saw Jack Conway standing in the street. Jack! Greta! Oh, oh darling. Thank heaven you're safe. What's the matter? It's your brother. Oh, Jack, I, I hate to tell you this, but, but he's dead. What? Are you sure? Yes. I saw it with my own eyes. He and Duke had a terrible fight. He knocked Duke down, and, and then Duke drew a knife. And, oh, no. Oh, darling, it was awful. Oh. Oh, don't cry, honey. Don't take it so hard. You couldn't help it. Does Duvall know you saw him? Oh, yes. He threatened to kill me if I told the police. I had to wait till he wasn't looking before I could slip away. I intended to go to Monty headquarters and tell them what happened. You won't have to. Sergeant Preston has already gone to get a search warrant. When he comes back, we'll go in and get Duvall. 
A gunman named Monk Prouty is helping him. They're going to take the body out the back door and put it in the river. The sergeant's dog is back there in the alley watching the door. I'll go back there, too. Oh, Jack, please don't. You haven't got a gun. Let the Mountie handle things. I will when he gets back. I just want to make sure Duval doesn't get away. Please be careful, darling. Why, if anything happened to you, I think I'd die. Don't you worry about me. Just make sure nothing happens to you. You going back inside? I guess I'd better. Duval won't be suspicious, will he? Oh, I don't think so. He's got enough to worry about without bothering about me. Goodbye, Jack. Goodbye, honey. Greta went back inside the cafe and hung up her parka. As she was walking toward the dance floor, Monk Prouty tapped her on the arm. Hey, Greta, come on back to the office. The boss wants to tell you something. All right. It's us, boss. Monk and Greta. What do you want to see me about, Duke? Monk tells me you went outside after you left here. That's right, I did. What for? I was feeling a little sick. I wanted some fresh air. You sure then? Of course I'm sure. I went outside and walked up and down for a minute or so and came right back in. And that's all? Say, what is you this? Are you... double-crossing little liar. Monk saw the whole thing. He saw you out there spilling the beans to the Conway kid. Duke, listen, you got me all wrong. I, I didn't tell him anything. Shut up. I might have believed you if you hadn't tried to lie to me. Oh, I knew you were selling me out. Grab her, Monk. Oh, no. Monk seized the girl with one hand and clapped the other over her mouth to keep her from screaming. Greta kicked and clawed like a wildcat. Suddenly, she jerked free from Monk's grasp. Let go of me! As she stumbled back, she tripped and fell. Her head struck hard against the corner of Duke's desk. She's out cold. What'll I do with her? Go through to that chair. All right. There. Now what? We'll have to get rid of her along with Conway's body and mighty quick, too. Lift the curtains, take a look out bag, see if the coast is clear. All right. Duke. What's the matter? The Conway kid and the Mountie's dog. Huh? They're standing right out there in the alley watching the door. <coughs> Holy smokes. We're trapped, Duke. We won't be able to get the body out like you planned. And that Mountie will be here any minute with the search warrant. Oh, uh, we can still make it. We'll kill the kid and the dog, too. Are you crazy? You plug them, everyone will hear the shot. And if you try rushing them, they'll make enough racket to wake the dead. Uh-uh. Now, Duke, you can count me out right now. Now, listen, Monk. You can't let me down now. You've got to help me. It's hopeless, I tell you. Use your head. Even if you could kill the kid, you'd never get away with that many murders. You'd swing, sure. Well, get out of the territory. They can't hang me if they can't catch me. Maybe not, but where does that leave me? Now, listen, Monk. You've been playing for peanuts so far. In that safe, I've got more than 20,000 in gold. You help me make my getaway, and half of it's yours. Duke, you're a mighty good persuader. What's your plan? Now listen, I'll tell you. It was less than ten minutes later that Sergeant Preston returned with a search warrant. Oh, no. oh, oh, oh. The sergeant was surprised and a little worried to find that Jack Conway was nowhere in sight. Well, that's funny. Must have heard King out back and gone around to investigate. I'd better take a look. Hastily, the sergeant made his way between the two adjoining buildings to the alleyway and back of the cafe. Once again, he was in for a surprise. King greeted him eagerly, but there was no sign of Jack. What happened to Jack, fella? Is he back here? King trotted over to the door leading into Duke Duvall's office. He looked back at his master and then once more gave an urgent bark. Oh? I was going in through the cafe, but maybe I'd better use this door instead. The sergeant repeated his knock. Finally, a sliver of light showed as Duke Duvall opened the door cautiously. Oh, it's you, Preston. You took your time about answering the door. I wasn't expecting you to come in the back way. Any objection? How did you get... Uh... Proper search warrant. Here it is, right here, signed by the commissioner himself. I'll take your word for it. Come on in. Duval held the door open just wide enough for the sergeant to enter. King was forced to fall behind his master. Before he could follow the sergeant into the room, the door was slammed in his face. Put up your hands, Bounty. All right. All right, keep him covered, Mother, while I take his gun. <laughs> That's what it is. Now then, sergeant, I'm going to open the door again. I'll let your dog in. You 
Better not let him make any false moves or he'll get a bullet right in the head, you savvy? I heard you. Hold it, King. Down, fella. Easy, boy. Easy now. Well, Duval, what now? Now we take care of you and the dog both. The same way you took care of Jack and the girl? Or will it be a knife like you used on Steve over there? What's the difference, Marty? You'll all be feeding the fishes in another hour or so. I take it from that that you intend to drop our bodies in the river. That's right. By the time your pals on the force find out what's happened, Monk and me will be over the border in Alaska where the Maltese can't touch us. You're making a big mistake, Duval. If you killed Conway in a fight, you could always plead manslaughter and get off of the prison term. But if you commit murder, you'll swing for it just as sure as I'm standing here. We'll take our chances on that money. Suit yourself. You know, Duval, the thing that puzzles me most about the case is why you're doing away with the girl. Incidentally, she's Greta Vincent, isn't she? That's right. I rather thought she was in with you on this deal. Apparently, I was wrong. She was in with me. She was helping me swindle the Conway kid. And she saw me kill Steve Conway, too. But you got cold feet when you showed up and tried to double-cross me. Oh. Cut out the palaver and get down to business. Can't you see he's just stolen for time? Unknown to anyone else in the room, Greta Vinson had recovered consciousness while Duke and the sergeant were speaking. Turn around, Preston, and keep your hands up high. Monk, you keep an eye on the door. Yeah, boss. Wisely, she'd remain still and watch the scene through slitted eyelids. But now, with Monk's attention occupied and Duke raising his gun to knock out the sergeant, Greta acted fast. Grabbing up the same paperweight she'd used on Steve Conway, she hurled it at Monk. Monk saw the movement and fired. No, you don't. Oh. Greta fell, fatally wounded. King leaped at Monk. And at the same moment, the sergeant whirled a face Duval. Are you Duval? Duval's gun was knocked from his hand. He staggered and went down before the mountain's furious onslaught. King had already disarmed Monk Prouty. No, 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 Preston, don't hit me again. I've had enough. Me too. Call off your dog, Manny. All right, King. On guard, boy. Oh, you don't, Duval. I'll take that gun. Now, get on your feet, both of you. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Sergeant Preston handcuffed his two prisoners together and ordered King to watch them while he attended to Greta and Jack Conway. Jack came too quickly, but Greta was beyond help. Sergeant, I haven't said, isn't there anything we can do to save her? It's no use, Jack. Monk's bullet must have gone close to her heart. She's dying. She risked her life to save us. Don't flatter yourself. I did it to save my own skin. I've always hated men. And I... I hate you, too. Greta. You don't mean that. She's gone, Jack. Oh. It's my fault. I hadn't let Duval trick me, she might still be alive. What do you mean? I was watching out back with King. Duval carried Greta over to the door so I could see her. He told me he'd kill her if I didn't come in and help him. Like a fool, I came. King was smarter. He wouldn't budge from his post. Don't blame yourself too much, Jack. Maybe it's better this way. Somehow, I don't think her life was very happy. Let's hope she'll find peace now that this case is closed. Now, here's Sergeant Preston with a preview of our next adventure, The Case of the Crown Fire. When King and I went to Wilderness Landing to investigate a shooting, we found the town in danger of being wiped out by a forest fire. We joined in the fight to save it, so we were off guard and unarmed when we faced the additional peril of a killer's gun. Be sure to listen to this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Wednesday until September when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck till next Wednesday. So long.